new tutorial for computer art and what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is creating a surreal scene where we are looking at an ocean view uh, and we have something unusual going on in this ocean body of water and also what's happening too is that we can see underneath the water and above and out of the side of the water at the same time which kind of makes this uh, that's really the main technique we're going over in this tutorial is using masks to create uh, an effect here and also layer styles to create the effect of seeing something underwater and above at the same time. Uh, just to look at some other examples of this project that I've done before, you got things like giraffes hanging out in deep water, kind of eating from palm trees, and then why not underwater shack coming at you. I just found this image and thought it would be funny to throw it in there. So uh, going ahead and closing out, gonna start up a new document here We'll go File New. We use kind of a standard size for most projects here, and we'll change pixels to inches. We'll go with a width of 10 inches and a height of 8, and we'll set the resolution at 150. Background content says white is good. We'll say Create. All right, so first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to do a Google search for an image. I'm going to look for the uh, for an ocean sunset, and let's see what I get for images here. I'm going to want something where we see the water go off the front edge, so we don't really want to see the beach like in some of these images. So the water is just going to be coming at you and then ending. So a lot of these are pretty good. This is a pretty nice looking one here that I might go ahead and right click on and copy and then go back to Photoshop here and hit Command V to paste it in. I'm gonna have to stretch it out just a little bit, holding Shift, drag in the corners to make sure this fills the whole width of my canvas here. Now, it doesn't have to reach the whole, the bottom actually, it just needs to make sure that it gets to the width. All right, so now what I'll do is take this sunset, I'm gonna move it up so that I got maybe a third of my canvas here and another third and then maybe another third where it's kind of space left underneath the ocean here and so that looks pretty good just gives me a little area down there below to work with so next thing that we're gonna do is actually just create a new layer and then fill it with a gradient and what we're gonna do so the gradient tool hides with the paint bucket they're both fill tools so I'm gonna hold down on that and select the gradient open up my gradient window here by clicking on our colors up at the top. Now what I can do with this gradient is I'm going to take one end, so my inside color, actually I want to be a light color from this ocean. So if I move my mouse out here, I have an eyedropper, I can click and select one of these lighter colors. Let's see if I can get something a little lighter. That works. And now I'm going to click on this spot here, and now I'm going to choose one of the darker colors. So like that. So now I'm pulling light to dark colors straight out of this ocean water, so it should match pretty well. Uh, I want to make sure that I have my radial gradient option on. That's the second spot right here. And then I'm just going to click and drag to make a gradient um, that's going to, for right now, it's going to cover the entire image here. So what we'll need to do is take the opacity and turn that down a little bit so that we can still see our other image through it and we're going to create a layer mask on this layer, a layer mask on this gradient so that I can see through a window to this underneath it. So our layer mask button is right here, this uh, rectangle with the circle next to the FX button, and we're going to click that. I'm going to take my marquee tool, my rectangular marquee tool, so if you don't see the rectangular marquee, click and hold and pick that, and that's going to allow me to take this area. I'm gonna click and drag a box that goes down to about that point there um, where the bottom of my ocean image is and then I'm going to need my fill my paint bucket tool I'm going to take that with the color black here if you have white as your active color you could hit these little arrows switch black to your active color and then I'm just going to fill this area with black and so you can see how that worked in my mask so that kind of created and I'm going to hit command D it created a window so that I can see my image underneath this gradient. So what I could do now is take this layer and turn it all the way back up to 100% opacity. All right, so that looks pretty good for where we want to be right now. Now, if you want to adjust your gradient, 
you could go back to the gradient tool. Again, your gradient should still be there. And maybe what I'll do is try to get a little bit more. Oops. I was clicking on my mask layer here. I need to make sure I'm on the gradient area. And if I make this shorter, see how if I make it shorter, I'll get a, uh, a smaller circle. We want to see a pretty good amount of dark just along the edges, basically. So I'm just trying to get this. That seems pretty good. So dark along the edges and light in the center there. Um, so now what I'm ready to do is go on to the next step here. I'm going to create another new layer. And on this layer, I want to render some clouds. So we should know how to do this from prior lessons. So we're going to go to the filter menu, go down to render, and then we want to render clouds. Rendering clouds on this layer, we're also now going to take this same mask and we're going to copy it onto this cloud layer. The way we can really easily do that is hold down the Option key, the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, and click and drag this mask up to layer 3, and let go of your mouse, and then that drops it there, and I can let go of Alt. Okay, and so now you can see is just the clouds, I can see them just in that bottom sliver where the white uh, is. Okay, um, now what I'll want to do is change the layer style of this layer of clouds. So I'm going to go to the normal, where you see normal here for your layer style, and I want this to go to soft light. And you'll see soft light kind of blends the clouds in nicely with the gradient there. And we'll also just kind of turn the opacity down of the clouds just a little bit to maybe blend them in a little bit better, maybe make them not so strong. They're really kind of dark in some areas, maybe 50% maybe even a little lower, maybe I'll go with like 40%. And that should do, that looks pretty good. So next thing we're going to get to is we are going to choose an image to actually put underwater here. And so I had kind of a plan here to create a surreal scene where the Statue of Liberty is underwater. And so I'm going to take this image right click, copy it, go back to Photoshop. I'm going to hit Command V. I can paste it right in here. Actually, what I might do is Command Z is start a new document. Just go File New. We'll just say OK to the size because the clipboard should recognize that we copied an image. I'm going to hit Command V and paste it in here. That way I can work on this in a separate uh, area. Sometimes it's a little easier. I've got less layers going on to kind of do what I need to do. I got a very simple background here too, which is nice. I'm taking my magic wand tool. Uh, if you don't see the magic wand, it may be behind the quick selection brush. It's right underneath your lasso tool. So magic wand, and then you can just click anywhere out here. And because this is a nice flat color, it automatically selected all of that stuff. Now I have a couple areas I didn't get to here. If I make sure I have add to selection option turned on, I can click and click and I have all of those now I could just hit delete and I've got my image kind of separated from its background if I want to now I could really easily go to select the inverse um, and now I have this area I could just hit command C and go back to this project hit command V is gonna put it on a new layer which is perfect and it's a pretty good size actually already, so it kind of lucked out with that there. And I'm just going to kind of put this over to the side a little bit. Kind of cool actually how that is lining up with about where the sun is. Um, so now what we need to do is we are going to duplicate this layer. So we need two copies of it. So if I just right click on this layer and go down to duplicate layer and then say OK, not too worried about the name of it. Now I've got two different copies. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to um, copy the mask again from right here onto this lower layer. So again, we're just going to hold the Option key, click and drag that mask layer up to this bottom um, image. Now, can't tell what's happening yet because we still have this top layer copy visible, but if I turn that off, you can see what happened to this layer here. So now this layer is only visible in this bottom section, 
and now I can take this and do the same thing with it. I want to make this go to a soft light layer and you see how that blends that right in the same way that the clouds and everything worked here. So now if I turn this back on, I'll see this image in front of it. Okay, now this is going to work the same way for whatever image you plant in here, whether it's something like you saw me do before, giraffe, uh, a tortoise, or Shaquille O'Neal, whatever you put in here will kind of work the same way. Um, now what we're going to do is create a new mask on this top layer. This mask will be a little bit different, so we can't just copy it off another layer, but what we want to do is we want to take our marquee tool again and we want to start at the bottom edge here just off the side and I'm going to click and drag to select an area that goes just a little bit above let's see that's pretty good just a little bit above the edge of the water so there's this little bit of space in here between there now what I'll do is again go to my paint bucket tool and my paint bucket tool with this mask part selected I'm gonna click down here and you'll see what that did was it made only the top part of this layer actually visible if I hit command D now you can see where we're headed here we have to do a little bit of fuzzing to these edges um, and so what we're gonna do is we are going to take our brush tool and once we take the brush tool we're going to actually with this mask selected again we're just gonna brush along this edge right here and so um, you can see it very subtle there now make sure if for your brush that you have a brush that's got a faded edge or a fuzzy edge I might turn up the size of this a little bit and so you can see how that's kind of just getting rid of that really solid line that's there and just going across to make this appear a little bit more realistic here all right now another edge we're going to want to fuzz is the edge of our ocean right here so what we're going to need to do there is take the mask that's on our gradient layer here and we're going to use our eraser tool and now again this needs to be the same type of brush so something with a faded edge around 20 well no that's not going to be quite big enough so I'm going to turn up the size on that a little bit more and what we want to do is just erase the bottom edge here and you can see that as I'm starting kind of below the ocean see how that's kind of fuzzing out that line that is there and so even I might even use this to kind of take out well some of that part but that now looks a little bit better blended so what I could do as well is erase a little bit from this uh, gradient from this mask and just to reveal that part that I can now see of the uh, Statue of Liberty there so that kind of lines up better so I'll go back to this gradient layer and maybe erase just a little bit more there cool alright so now we're well on our way um, the other things that I was gonna add to really kinda make this scene surreal you're gonna add them and do the same process with these two masks you actually copy those masks again pretty easily um, so I can close this now that I'm done I'm going to actually go back to Google Chrome here and my idea was sort of well you know we've got a Statue of Liberty underwater why not go with sort of a Planets of the Apes theme here and so I am going to use this barrel again simple background easy to remove delete that background select the inverse so I just have the barrel now command C to copy command V to paste um, move this layer to my top and then I'm going to take this barrel turn it on its side so back to the story here I was planning on doing kinda of like a Planet of the Apes sort of imagery here with a barrel of monkeys floating in the water here next to um, the Statue of Liberty so what I 
think I want to do. I think that's about the right placement. Um, again, kind of putting it right on the same border there. Uh, I'll want to duplicate this layer as well. And then again, I can copy these masks. So the bottom one, I'm going to hold Alt and drag it to this bottom one here. And then this top one here with the Statue of Liberty, hold Alt, click and drag it to the top one there. And you can see it's created the similar effect. So what I do need to make sure I go back and do is make this bottom layer. I'm going to turn this to soft light and that's going to blend it with the layers underneath. So you can see that created that same effect for the barrel. And kind of the last piece here, I'm going to close this, is to, of course, add a monkey. So I'm going to copy this image, go back to Photoshop, File New, Command N. Again, create, paste them in. Use my magic wand to get rid of the white background here. and hit delete. I'm going to go ahead to select inverse, command C, back here, command V, and now I can get my final piece here into play. A monkey on a barrel with my Statue of Liberty. So, I hope you guys have lots of luck with creating your own surreal scene. Um, and have some fun with this. Maybe the last thing that I could possibly do before I let you go is maybe take my brush tool with black selected and I could do a little bit of like a shadow underneath this monkey. So I might create a new layer, uh, pull it right underneath the monkey here. And let's see, I'm just kind of clicking with black and I'm, maybe my brush size is just a little bit big. but just adding a little touch of some shadow underneath that layer and then just turning the opacity down until it seems not so harsh and that kind of helps. I could do more erasing and stuff there to really kind of help that appear more realistic, but that's it, pretty much it for this lesson. As I said before, I hope you have fun uh, being creative with your own surreal underwater scene.